Hey guys, uh, my name is Mike Ferrari. I'm an account executive here at JASC. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a huge problem in cybersecurity um, and how JASC is leveraging AI in our security operations platform uh, to help solve this. Currently how it works in the Fortune 5000, um, who we mostly sell to, they've got what you call a security operations center. They've got teams of analysts, threat intelligence, uh, incident response, and these guys are just totally um, just encumbered by all the different alerts that they're seeing from all these different point uh, solutions, right? Um, speaking of that gap um, that's getting larger and larger exponentially, um, the adversaries are also at the same time getting much stronger, sharing different methods of attacking organizations. Um, so we think that the, uh, the cybersecurity arena is certainly ripe for artificial intelligence or adding a force multiplier, basically taking 10 analysts and um, giving them the force of 20. Now, we believe that in a big part, um, the current market doesn't really help these guys out, right? So the old adage was build your, or your uh, castle walls high, um, and if nobody bad gets in, then nothing bad will happen. But um, I, you know, I sell to a lot of uh, chief information security officers, and nobody believes that anymore. It's all about now, uh, not if, um, but when somebody will get in um, and do some damage to your organization. So at JASC, we deploy bro-based network sensors that give us the ability to see not only on the perimeter, but take a look at traffic um, from an east-west perspective, and then add that to the, to the visibility uh, of the artificial intelligence. Um, when it comes to appliance deployments, they don't scale. They never, I mean, especially not now. Um, if you're, I work with a couple organizations, one over in Germany and one over in Mongolia. That's very different. Um, but being able to use the cloud AWS, we can spin up a single tenant at each location in each country, right? And then from there, what we do is we deploy those software sensors. We think that if, um, in, 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 instead of appliances, we believe that if we're going to use AI to help scale the SOC, then we should also do it to help scale the, uh, the organization itself and the architecture that we're using. Um, so we purpose-built JAS to deliver this evolution. We're open source built. We're using Bro, as I mentioned. We're using Hadoop, um, injecting big data in that process, which a lot of older to tools to this day don't use. Um, we're also using Google's TensorFlow as our AI neural network. Cloud-based, as I mentioned, um, we really believe that you know, working with domestic retail organizations, if they have 20, 200 different locations, it doesn't make sense at all to deploy boxes at each location and face legacy uh, software costs. And from an AI-driven perspective, I'll talk more about this in the next couple slides, um, but as my CEO says, uh, humans are very creative. We're creative beings. We're good at uh, finding shelter, finding food, water. Um, a lot of the tasks and the signals that these guys in the SOC look at on a day-to-day -day basis um, are extremely repetitive, uh, mundane, and uh, in many cases, for instance, the target attack, they had this signal there to investigate, but when you ask them to piece that together and connect the dots with another you know, 60 signals, it's just very, very difficult, and it's only getting worse. Um, so this is how we uh, built our technology stack in that cluster there. So as I mentioned, it's single tenant. We deploy a cluster strategically um, wherever it makes the most sense. Um, it could be Frankfurt, if they're in Canada, it could be Toronto. But from there, um, we want to aggregate that data to the cluster. So we have a log sensor. Logs are big in security. Um, so most sims use logs. And then a network sensor as well, as I mentioned. We place those on the tap of the span port strategically at different locations. We can also deploy on switch, uh, switches if you're using Costco, KVM deployment, something like that. Um, but on the left there, it gets a little technical. Um, this is built by security analysts for security analysts. So um, you know, we've got different tools like Shodan, open sourced uh, enrichment tools, um, virus total, for instance. But what I really want you to pay attention to is that threat detection, um, that uh, pillar there. Um, I'll start from the bottom up, but patterns are kind of like tripwires, right? In an organization, um, they're, very, they're very popular. We've used them historically, but um, it's kind of like a function. If this happens, alert me. Now, threat intelligence is more like a known bad. I know this IP address is bad. Um, it's kind of like in your neighborhood. If you know there's a criminal on the loose and you have their license plate, you can apply that to the network. We'll flag that as well. And then from a machine learning and analytics perspective, this is the new one in the space. It's anomalies, outliers, lateral movement. It's being uh, able to identify by looking at east-west traffic different threats that before um, you didn't have access to because you didn't have the pattern or you didn't have the threat intelligence. So if you see Cynthia from Billing, for instance, um, logging in from China, but you're looking across the office at her, that's an anomaly. But what if she was in China, right? That's a false positive. So we're going to signal all of those to the analysts, but, or sorry, rather than give those all to the analysts, we're going to apply them to the AI layer right there. Um, we're using uh, Google's TensorFlow, as mentioned, so it'll be able to ingest all of these different signals, hundreds of thousands, and then on average, we'll give them three smart alerts a week. Um, so with my last slide here, you can kind of see a smart alert up there in the top right. 
Um, what I want you to pay attention to, if you could see it, is there's 24 signals on that one top left. It looks like a baseball card. When you click into it, you could see a full timeline of different attacks. And these are some of the other attacks that we've been able to identify in our customers as well. Um, so I believe I'm out of time, but what I really want to emphasize is it's all about scaling um, the SOC and being able to handle a lot more signals than currently what they're facing. Thank you. So I get that you're applying uh, AI to threat uh, prevention and uh -huh. doing it in a different way and you got the AWS leverage behind you. Uh, do, one, does this work in a multi-cloud environment? And then two, how do you prove to customers that you know, on a quantifiable basis, my solution is way better than all the other ones out there? Is it less false positives or detection of threats that nobody else picked up? Yes, so um, the first question, multi-tenancy, that's something we're looking at now. Uh, we're just post Series A. We've got a couple of companies asking for that, but as of right now, it's still single tenant, but it's certainly possible. Um, on the second question, with quantifiable results, um, generally what we tell, we scope out a pilot, and that's generally how you sell in this industry to enterprise. You do a, a four week uh, trial. We take a look at how many alerts they have from what sources, and I should also mention that they have endpoint alerts that they're seeing as well. We can ingest all different type of alerts from a variety of tools and really amplify that. Um, so it really comes down to how many alerts they're seeing, but generally we can cut it down. I don't have statistics on me, but we can cut it down pretty small. Maybe like five smart alerts a week. So you just talked about ingesting existing log data and things yeah. of that nature. Do you have evidence on how long it takes to train these models post-deployment? Um, as an account exec, I, I just don't on me, but uh, I'm sure our, our team does. Uh, we have a whole data science team that's getting bigger and bigger by the day since our Series A, uh, led by Joe Zotti, who was formerly a Splunk. Um, so I'm sure we do, but I don't. Um, do the uh, different instances of, uh, of just talk to each other? So build a database of company A at this threat. So company B is learning about this, this, the same threat. It's interesting that you say that. So we're not at that point yet. That's collaboration. And we certainly believe in that. What we let our customers do is we alert them via Slack. And we communicate them on the alerts that we're seeing with them in, uh, via Slack. We don't have to VPN in since we're in the cloud. Um, but we also let them communicate with one another in a channel called the Hive in Slack as well. Um, so no, not directly do, we, do, do these clusters communicate with one another. At this point, we think that uh, that might be a little edgy.